man. It just never ends. Ever. <sighs> oh, this is uh, just a LaCroix. No, I'm not depressed. But I want to talk to you guys today about void bloopers. Void. Void, you know. Look it up. I'll put it in the title probably. But void bloopers. You've never heard of this game. So let's do a greatest shooter. I'm Darth Pascal. Welcome to Suns Gaming. <gasps> <laughs> So if you're new or you've forgotten, the way we do these reviews on finding the greatest shooter of all time is we do three categories. We start with atmosphere, then we go to gameplay, and we finish off with legacy. Let's start off with atmosphere, because the atmosphere of this game is extremely unique. It's one of a kind. I call things unique way too much, but this game really is. It is one of a kind. It is, you'll never see anything else like it because you have Borderlands, which is cell shaded, but you don't really have anything this cell shaded and especially 2D. The enemies in this game are 2D. They are one dimensional planes. Well, you could argue in all games they're 2D, but the visuals in this game have a 2D effect, which is very cool. And you won't see it in anything else. So I really like that. Each level, although they are randomly generated, feels very fresh, and you might get repeats in the overall atmosphere, but you're not really ever going to get repeats in the exact level layout, which makes each jump from ship to ship very very interesting because you don't know what you're going to get into you don't know what enemies are necessarily going to be on there how many how tough how much sneaking you're going to have to do you just don't know and so when you launch to a ship and it's pitch black it can be a big surprise or you launch to one ship expecting only a few of one enemy type and you have five or six of them and you die or maybe you have to just run off the ship and not get the resources you need going to the next ship with only 10 health because in this game, your health does not regenerate. And that leads us to gameplay. So in this game, I blurred atmosphere and gameplay, but let's talk about gameplay because the gameplay is the biggest part of this game. The atmosphere is very cool and sets a cool trend for hopefully games to follow it, but the atmosphere isn't the big focus it's the gameplay now the gameplay feels almost like metroid where you have to search every nook and cranny wherever you go each level you have to search everywhere for everything because you don't know where a sandwich food ammo whatever you need is going to be hiding of course on the map you do have these stars that highlight things that you you want but not necessarily things you need like few food or fuel or fueled as I just said. Now here's where the gameplay gets very interesting. Your health does not regenerate, ever, ever. There are times where you rest on a ship and you will get health back, but overall, your health will not regenerate unless you find food or you rest. So even jumping from one ship to the next does not mean that you're going to get health back. If you do, it's usually very minimal. And so you really have to plan each trip out because once you're dead, your journey resets back to the beginning and you start as a new character, which is a very cool and interesting gameplay feature because you get very attached to each character maybe they have something weird about them that they randomly cough and while it might reveal your position to enemies you just find it endearing and you love that that former prisoner each character is extremely endearing extremely cool and so when you die with one it feels like a loss and you don't want to reset back to the beginning now you reset back to the beginning of the position but what's cool is you keep all of the gear you've earned no matter what so if you worked for three four hours with one character to unlock half of the unlocks and then you die you didn't lose your progress you just lost your position on the ship or on the map and your goal is to get as many of these 
things accomplished. The game kind of feels like it never ends because there's always something to do. And so once you've had a fair share, you've had enough, you just hit new game and you can play through the whole game again and it'll feel fresh and original because like I said, each level is different. You don't really have repeat levels because they're mostly auto-generated. So wrapping up gameplay, let's talk about multiplayer, which won't take very long because there isn't any, and there isn't any co-op. And I can imagine this game getting five to 10 more hours out of me if it had co-op of some kind. Not necessarily a PVP multiplayer, but maybe you play with one or two friends online going on ships together. That would have kept me in the game a lot longer. But because it didn't have this multiplayer feature, I did lose interest fairly quickly. Now this isn't a game for everyone, but I would say the most fun I had with this game was playing with one other person and passing the controller off every so, every so many levels or every death. That was the best way to play this game because then there's an added level of suspense because someone else is relying upon your performance. Now let's talk about legacy and I can't see this game having any legacy at all because you've never heard of it and I would have never heard of it if it wasn't on games pass but I'm glad it was because I got a decent amount of playtime out of it and had a lot of fun. Now I didn't really beat the game, but it doesn't really seem like the game ever ends, so I didn't really know if there was an ending. I'm sure there is, and I don't really want to find out because I enjoyed the experience that I had. Would I say that this game is a must play? No, I wouldn't. But if you're looking for something that's stealthy, that's fun, that will keep you and maybe one other friend engaged through a couch co-op experience, definitely check this out because if you have Games Pass or you're interested in Games Pass, I would say get Games Pass and try it. It wouldn't be my number one on the try list on Games Pass, but it'd probably be number two or number three. Is it the second or third best game on Games Pass? No, but it was a fun experience for me, and I really did enjoy it. So where does it run on our running list? Sadly, it's all the way at the bottom. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad game, it just means it's not better than any other of these legendary shooters. We have to do some of these filler ones because we can't just do the best shooter of all time every week. That was getting a little old to me, so I wanted to mix it up bring a new game to you guys, branch out, and hopefully maybe show you a game that might be your greatest shooter of all time. I highly doubt that, but this game brought me a decent amount of joy, and I hope it brings that to you too. If you're new here, subscribe. We've got some more Apex content coming to you soon. Anyways, I'm Darth Pascal, and I'll catch you guys next time.